video for you. So we're in the porch, you've got a double socket down here. So we've come out, we're going to put a bit of tube down the wall because obviously we can't chase in this. I'm going to put like some sort of maybe weatherproof or surface matted box there for your outside socket. We've got a chase here for your double socket which is going to go here. Got a very wide one there for your light switch because there's a lot of wires in this one. So you've got your light switch there, we're going to go through the wall so we don't have to chase this side. So that will just probably be a new slightly deeper box there and we'd come through from the other side. We've got your uh, socket over there, socket over there, got the light in. Um, we're going to come, because we can't come from above, we have to be in a zone and we can't come from the side because there's a radiator. We're actually going to come from the porch to get the socket in there via a bit of tube. Um, We've managed to run, this This is every single wire for the house. We've managed to get them all into here so far. So that is eventually going to go into the fuse board. So that's all of them. Again, we won't need to chase that because we're going to do it on the other side of the wall. We. This is probably as far as we've got the kitchen so far. We've got the feed in and out for the light switch. We, we're going to have to sort of, I was hoping there might be a tube in the wall. If there isn't, we'll have to chase that out. We haven't really touched anything in the kitchen just yet because we're gonna we're, we're kind of hoping we can get something under the floor, but that's that's another story. I'll tell a lie actually. There's the power for in there. We're gonna come from from the other room. I'll show you. Okay, so in the living room, we're gonna use this chase to get behind the unit. So that's that's gonna be on the utility ring. We've got one chase for that socket. We haven't, we can't get to that side of the room yet because of upstairs, we have to move the furniture over, but that's that's nearly ready. We've got the chases in, we've got a chase in at the end, we've got a cable in for the light, uh, got a chase in for that socket, got a chase in for that socket. Uh, fairly confident we can get to that light. We just need to shift the furniture, drill underneath the floorboards, and there's a void up there. It's like a little full ceiling type, roof type thing. So that shouldn't be too much of an issue. Right, let's go up the stairs. Right. It is a little bit messy up here. It's got the boards up still. So these are all, all our wires coming in from downstairs. These are the old redundant ones, but we're still using a few of them, so we haven't cut them all out yet. We've got room one. The two smaller rooms, we've, we've put the car, we've rolled the carpets up, put them up in the loft. We've got some of the, this was a bit of a pain actually because we had hardboard down, so we've had to cut bits of hardboard up. And whoever had to put it down previously, it's a bit patchy, I mean like they've been putting little bits like that in to try and hide the gaps. But we've uh, got the wires in, so the old uh, hallway sockets down there. We're going to use that as our route up to the loft, so we've got our two, got a loft radial circuit for your sockets and for your lighting cable, which is also going to do the smoke alarm. We've pumped up in the skirtings ready, so that will feed the light switch. That will feed the socket. There's a socket behind the skirting, there's a socket behind the skirting. The bigger carpets have just rolled back. Uh, this is a lot of downstairs wiring. Again, we've got a socket there, a uh, light switch, socket there. Obviously, you can't do anything over there just yet because we need to get to it. What we're going to do is obviously these sockets are a little bit higher, so we're going to cut the boxes in, try and get them live, and the day they're live, we cut them out and put some bonding in, so that's our method around that. Uh, so we've basically got as far as here, and we're gonna try and get this all sorted, put the carpet down. We've got some legs curled up here. This is, this is our office. And then we're gonna fish the wires up here and probably do that room last. That's, that's the plan anyway, so uh, cool. I'll, I'll probably give you another video tomorrow.
uh, we've got all the cabling downstairs. It is a little bit of a shambles. We've, we've thrown some bonding in. This isn't the finished result. We just wanted to try and get as much as we could as quickly as possible. So don't panic, that, that is going to be sort of tidied up a little bit. We just want to try and get the conduit stain in the wall. You unfortunately don't have any power downstairs at the moment, but we have run a lead over here so your internet's working. There is a lead light there that you're more than welcome to use because the hallway light doesn't work at the moment. We've also run an extension lead behind your TV. So your TV works. All the power in your kitchen's working, that's fine. This is the two extension leads that we've run, so they're, they're powered from the kitchen at the moment. We've uh, had a tidy up and removed the sheeting, although I wouldn't be surprised when you do turn up if there's going to be a, like a layer of dust. Uh, I've got you some bread, there's your mail. Put some f some milk in the fridge. So that's sorted. Um, all right, that's all locked up. Feel free to pull off any bags that are in the way. We've used this room as a bit of storage. We've, we've still got everything covered in here. You're more than welcome to pull the dust sheets off. We've, just, we've done that because we know there's going to be a layer of dust in the air. So downstairs, the living room light and the hallway light doesn't work, unfortunately, but the kitchen does, so you can still prep food. Hopefully Monday, we should have that working for you, so that should be working Monday. Everything that needed to be run under the floor has been run under the floor. We still need to sort of have a little bit of a tidy up with carpets, but we've got them down. All the cables that need to come up have come up in their areas. They just still need to be chiselled to their locations and boxes sunk in. We've left the beds wrapped. Your bed's wrapped. Your pillows are underneath the wrapping. We've tried to put your furniture back as much as we can remember where it goes. Your lights work. All, all the lighting upstairs works. Apart from the hallway, because unfortunately that is actually one of the downstairs lights because of the two-way. That was a bit of a shambles. Bathroom lights work, so that's fine. Uh, your daughter's room, there's, there's a, the odd crease which we'll have to try and iron out for you. Um, again, we've left it wrapped. We've chopped some sockets in. As you can see, obviously, still, still a lot of bonding that we need to do. But we've, um, we've managed to break the back out of it. So to be honest, there's just a, a mile, a mile's worth of little nitty bitty bits to try and to do now, it's just lots of little boxes to chop in here and there. All the all the long runs of cabling have all come through the floor, and they're under the stairs. So that's that's the horrible bit done. <laughs> you gonna say it? Everybody floats down here. <laughs> hey everyone, so. Pretty much final day today. Got a few minor snags, but we're waiting on material. So this is as far as we're gonna get. I'm gonna walk you through basically what is involved in a rewire, in a domestic rewire. It was occupied for a, a portion of it. And we had like a lot of furniture and things we had to get around. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and I'm gonna walk you through from the porch all the way probably through to the loft and what we've done in each room. So starting in the porch, what we've got, we've got a porch socket, you know, clean the car, put some Christmas decorations in, on the drive, that's your power outlet. We've done it as a ring circuit, so there's always the addition that if you want to put some out, outside lights, you can put a few spur next to it, dive out of it, put a light outside. Um, we've done that on a piece of conduit, it comes up, it also whizzes behind there and feeds a socket in the living room, purely because we couldn't get underneath that floor couldn't get under there so we had to find ways around it. Getting down here, I've got some sockets. The old sockets in this place were very low to the skirt and hence why we've moved them up now. It's a foot to the bottom. Ideally in a perfect world it'd probably be like 45 to the bottom which is what you'd do in a new build but we've done it to a foot. This is existing so you can get away with doing it that low. So bish bash bosh, all the sockets were a foot off the floor. So that was the hallway. This is the dining room. Again here's a chase. Couldn't get under the floor. So what we've done is we've had to go through the floor above and everything's got really long chases down to each box. There's one over there as well. Uh, pendants in a few rooms. Pendants there. The customer, as you can see, gave us some fixtures to stick up as we went. Um, again, kitchen, bonding in the walls. We do this purely because 
we don't want our conduit and cables exposed. In the past, I did a project and I didn't bond it. And I went on the impression that in a you know a week to two weeks, a plaster would be in and the house would be looking back to normal again. I turned up at that property a year later to do another little job. The cables were still there. <laughs> so everything gets bonded now. Replace the lights, like for like, heat detector. Um, again, couldn't get underneath. Fortunately though, we did manage to get under here. I think there's another little video on here. We managed to send a lad down there under the floor and get underneath the kickboards, hence we managed to do all this. We've used, for the white plastic, we've used Hager. I like Hager, I think he looks spot on. A bit like MK, flat around the edges, curved on the corners, get these little poppers, very resilient, very hard wearing, but um, I think it just, it's like MK, looks nice with the poppers, not cheap and cheerful like British General. So I think Ager's spot on. Um, so that's the kitchen sorted. These are chrome. Lift the front plates off so the decorator, when he decorates all our chases, doesn't ruin the front plates. These are just push on screwless front plates. Chases down for wall lights, chases down for sockets, chases down all over the place. Again, some fixtures that the customer's given us more chases down the walls. What we do like to try and do is drill behind the coving, but when it's an outside wall, there's a joist that runs across. So we unfortunately have to jump in front of the joist, hence why there's a little bit chopped out. But that shouldn't be a big issue for a decorator just to fill in that little. That did a little bit better on these ones. All right, upstairs. Oh, upstairs. Pendant. Smoke detector, light, chases down the wall. Again, a little bit of damage, but raised the socket, uh, replaced the light fixture. All of these were 16mm patrices, sorry, all of these were 16mm patrices, which means the box inside the wall was only very thin. These are dimmer switches, they need a lot more room. So we've replaced those boxes for much deeper boxes, which involved doing a bit of chasing, hence why there's a little bit of damage around the outside, which we've tried to make good, but we've had to replace with them. Whilst we was at it, <laughs> whilst we was at it, we've changed with the others as well, made them all deep, future-proofed it, so uh, if they would decide to put dimmers everywhere, they can do. Um, to be honest, we're not artists. We've just done our best with a bit of filler every now and again, but again, there's some more chases around the house. This is all the furniture we had to uh, contend with. Light switch, down lights are just like for light. We just had to find some LED equivalents that fitted in all the old, same old holes. This was a horrible piece of damage we had to do. We called a round hole so that we could try and get some cables up the wall to refeed the switches. This was a stud wall, but it was it's just a really old laughing plaster wall. But as, as damage goes, that's not the worst. We did a round hole because we could cut a round piece of plasterboard, put that in afterwards, and then bond over the top. As you can see, you can see the old clips, we've removed all the old wiring, and what we've done is we've actually put some flexi poly pipe, or flexi con, along the length of it. There we go. And that feeds all our old sockets on the other side of these stud walls. And we've literally glanded them into the back of a uh, dry lining boxes. So that doesn't look too shabby, does it? Hager, if you're watching this, one thing you can do that's better is you see these little poppers. There's no spares, mate, so and they're really hard to get out. So when the decorator comes to redecorate this, chances are they're going to go missing. If you could maybe put some spares in the bags, that would be that would be pucker, mate. So Hager, put some spares in the bags, please. Putting the last few light bulbs in up here. These had massive gaping holes in the ceiling. I think they were 80 mil wide, and the last chap painted around them, hence the marks around the outside. I think they were just over 100 mil wide. So what we've done is got some end lights, adjustable ones. Got some adjustable end lights, and we've. That's, that, to be honest, that's the only thing that really fitted in there. They don't really need to tilt, but it nearly covers the hole. Um, did you manage to label this? Yeah.
Brilliant. So we've labelled the board. I've still got a few stickers and a circuit chart to go on. We've tested the board, and here we go. I've got a bit of labelling here. You haven't, you've, you haven't, you've missed out a couple. That's supposed to say RCD as well, and that's supposed to say main switch. What we got here? Oh, I've done the same on this one as well. You're gonna, you're kicking yourself now, aren't you? Also, if I need to call that one DB1 and this one DB2. Yeah. But um, no, that doesn't look too shabby, does it? So, here's the consume units. They're nearly complete. They've got the labels on now. They're all terminated. It's all back to normal. We are missing the circuit charts and there's a couple of other stickers for your next uh, test inspection and 230 volts and RCD bollocks and blah blah blah. That'll go on in a minute. But we've just used our brother labeling machine to label this. And I'll be honest, it is a handy piece of kit. If you haven't got one, get hold of one. So what we've done is used a very small ribbon to label the top and to put all the numbers on for the circuits. We've labelled the bottom with a slightly bigger one, we've used a big yellow one for the top. We've actually used this one in the past to put a uh, Danger 230 volt stickers on, which are quite handy. Like We can sort of mimic that with this sticker, with that size uh, tape. And again, we've got it in here and we've gone up to number 20 there, so it makes it a little bit easier on the old test certificate later on to see what does what. So um, there you go, nearly, nearly finished. So this is the brother tester that I use. It is a P-Touch 7600. And I'll be honest, I've got on with it quite well. It's, I mean, it's a little bit fiddly to get your head around to begin with, like with label types and formats and stuff. But once you get your head around it, I tell you, what, that's that's quite tricky as well. The fact it's not a QWERTY keyboard. I, you know, I think I've had this for about six years, and I'm still looking for letters when it comes to typing stuff up. But no, it is fantastic when it comes to labeling cables or fuse boards or maybe um, data outlets. It's it's been fantastic. I do know there's a function that there's a lead here. I can plug that into my computer. And I believe I can probably make up my own sort of symbols and logos on it. I've, I've never done that. Maybe one day, but um, yeah, no, it's, it is good. One downside that I have found with it is the fact that I do have to keep it on charge when I'm printing. When I print, if it isn't on charge, the label comes out quite faint. But apart from that, I'm, I'm more than happy with it. Okay, so when we did this rewire, we put white plastic switches everywhere even though we knew that we were going to have to change them for chrome later on. The reason we did this is so that we could plaster and not have to worry about getting the switch damaged. Even so, saying that, we've put the switches on and we haven't put the fascias on just yet so that when the decorator comes and he sands the wall down and he paints and, you know, weren't malarkey, again, the switch will last a little bit longer. They can put the switches on later. This one is holding us up because this is on order. This is a intermediate and two-way switch purely because one does the upstairs which is two-way with down here what's that that's this one here yeah. okay so that does the upstairs lights whereas this one is an intermediate which is controlled via there here and if Ethan goes upstairs he can control it from up there as well there you go well hey so uh hence why this is such a tricky one one way around it would have been we could have put a single box there and a single box here and one could have been a two-way and one of them could have been an intermediate but that would have looked ugly and i didn't quite realize just how long this would take to arrive so unfortunately it's holding us up it's holding us up a little bit but apart from that it's not too bad so uh, that's the end of the job all right so we want you to subscribe here click here for the subscribe and click here for the next video and comment down below.